the impact that uh, some of these crimes, and you can even tell us the, the latest one that may have happened in, in Staten Island, <clears throat> uh, on people reporting to police. Now, New York is different than many other parts of the country. The, the New York City Police Department has never been in the business of uh, going after people because of their immigration status. And in most cases, the police in New York don't even ask you about that, even if they arrest you for another crime. Are the people you work with aware of that, or are they still fearful that they're, they're the authorities and they don't want to go anywhere near them? Uh, well, in our case, we're a small community organization and there is so much reach that we can get. That's why we need the help of the media. We need the help of the churches and other uh, places where we can get to a lot of people and try to make sure that people know this information. Uh, as you said, we have heard a lot of what's going on in Arizona, a lot of what's going on in other parts of the country where uh, police uh, will ask for your immigration documents if you come forward to do any type of reporting. That doesn't happen here in New York, but you know, we have people that move from other parts of the country and they might have that in, in, in their in their conscious that they you know some kind of bl uh, uh, block between them and the authorities so we're trying to make sure that that um, uh, um, that uh, communication uh, flows uh, and that we can act as a resource and somebody can come doesn't want to go to police for example that they can come to our center uh, we I have see. someone there uh, who can uh, work with them, uh, make sure that they follow up on the report, make sure that they follow up on the whole process. And recently, uh, starting yesterday, the Mexican consulate uh, sent uh, one of their representatives to be at our center every day for a, 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 you know, a time. Is that uh, the first time they're doing this? Exactly, uh -huh. yes. Okay. Uh, what's your experience on that? Are, are, are the people you work with fearful of the New York City police as far as uh, you know, reporting crimes against them because they might be deported? Well, <clears throat> yes, we've been having uh, some encounters with, with the police department. Obviously, the department uh, is, is trying to do the, the, uh, a good job, but some of the precincts, in, in, for example, in the Queens area, if a person's being picked up by the police, they bring it out to the precinct, but when they say they don't, they don't ask for papers, what they do is they notify the uh, immigration or ICE, yeah. saying, you know, we have this person, you know, can you check if, you know, they, in other words, they don't report him to immigration. They just, they inform to immigration that they have this guy. So immigration said, yeah, this guy has no papers. So, you know, can you hold it and we picked her up. So that means the police said, okay, it's not, you know, we didn't do anything. It's just, we comply with our, that's what they call the new program, Safe, uh, safe Communities. Uh -huh. And which New York is part of this, uh, this safe community, or the okay. stop and frisk also. Well, you know, yeah, stop and frisk, of that, course. That, but that's also part of the. Uh, it's not so clear for the community if it's safe or not. It's important. It's, that it's important to clarify this because my understanding of New York City's police department operating rules of procedure is not to report immigration right. status to simply deal with whether the person committed a crime, if not, if so on and so forth. Now, once they may be convicted of a crime right. and they're in the system that way, mm -hmm. then the, the, the prisons connect to uh, immigration. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if the police are doing that in those areas that you described, mm -hmm. those police would probably be going against New York City departmental regulations. So it's important to keep an eye on that because that well, would be... I mean, if it's, uh, I mean, if the police now is considered a crime uh, because of the, its lady selling ice cream in the sidewalk, mm -hmm. you know, that's already a crime. And that's some, some violations I think that's already been done because we have some cases of some lady that they haven't even get a ticket because they don't have a driver's license and stuff like that. Okay. So they take her out to the prison and that's why they, they, she ended up being deported because of that. Mm -hmm. Now, what about uh, Arizona? Everybody pretty much, unless you're on another planet, has heard about what's happening in Arizona. What do you hear in your communities about Arizona in the sense of how that's affecting people. Are people saying, hey, maybe we need to leave New York? Uh, or are there people suddenly coming into your neighborhoods who were in Arizona or out west and felt it was unsafe and are now coming to New York? Has it had any impact yet in, in communities here? Well, we, <coughs> we, 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 we've been hearing uh, already from uh, people from our community say that some friends and relatives are coming to New York because of this, uh, this law that might take place on the 29th. 
But what we see as, as these anti-immigrant policies that are going not only to Arizona, but all the other states are considering to follow up this, this mm -hmm. example, this is the result as, as this anti-immigrant sentiment, not only with Arizona, but also this coming from the, from the top level, like the federal government. Obama, we thought that it was going to bring change to our community, but obviously not. Uh, Bush uh, administration, we saw it was the worst in deportation. But with Obama, we seen the triple uh, numbers of deportation. So is, so that the, is that the change that we were expecting and so the Latino? a lot of disillusionment? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> of course. Uh, uh, discouragement. We, it's, mm -hmm. we, we, we really see that people are going to come out. But this is good because that's hopefully the, the Latino community, not only the Latino, will start. It's time to change. But it's time to change ourselves, the, the, the system. The laws need to be protected because we need to bring that change. They're not going to bring the change. Not the Republicans, not the Democrats. We have to uh, bring the power with the votes and get our electoral officials. But there's also Latino uh, public electoral officials that they've been traitors for our community. You know, we have so, congressmen, uh, congressmen in, in, in Congress, uh, but they're not, they not fighting. Nidia or Jose Serrano, they're not doing, they, they, they're not protecting us okay. because we're not votes. Not what I was going <laughs> to say. Part yeah. of the problem is if you're not legal, you can't vote. If you right. can't vote, you can't really have power.